Hello and welcome. This is Deepak Mishra and I welcome you again to this course. In this video, we are going to talk about the exams that are required to qualify to work as a doctor or a dentist in Germany. As you know, the language course has to be done. A1, A2, B1, B2 levels must be done. And from the exam point of view, B2 certificate would be required. I always suggest that to do B1 certificate exam also from Goethe or ECL, but that is not mandatory as far as the regulations are concerned. B2 certificate is mandatory. I have posted one video on YouTube few weeks back where for one of our consulting candidates, uh, we got a res rep response from the licensing authority that they don't require B2 certificate for a dentist, but that is not the rule yet. The same uh, reply we got for the another candidate from another state as a doctor and there B2 was required. So it's little controversial at, at present that what is the trend, will B2 be required in the future or not required is not sure. The trend it has started that at one candidate was told that okay fine you have done B2, we don't require a certificate, you take the Fox Sprach to Fung directly. But at this point of time I maintain that B2 certificate is mandatory. Alright? So the next exam is the Fach Sprach Profond. Now as you can see on your screen, this is the, the specialist language examination for medical doctors and dentists and it is to be taken by all foreign dental and medical practitioners. Even though you have studied in EU or countries from uh, European Union, uh, still you have to take the Fach Sprach Prüfung because even in European Union, languages are different. So it has nothing to do with the Kentnis Prüfung or direct recognition. If you have not studied in Germany or you don't have, uh, you have not studied German language to a very high extent or you were not born in Germany, then you must take the Fach Sprach Prüfung exam. Now this exam pattern has Three sections are Spatzent Gespräch, mean doctor patient conversation, which is basically the history taking. Then you have Arts Brief Schreiben, that means the case writing. The, after your history, you have to write the entire history in proper medical German. That is what is Arts Brief Schreiben. In some uh, Bundesländer, some states, they also have translation, German to Latin translation in the documentation part. Of clearum, informed consent, that has to be done during history taking itself. That from the 20 minutes of the Arzpatzent Gespräch, few minutes at the end has to be used for counseling the patient or discussing various therapy modalities or treatment mod uh, diagnostic modalities that relevant to that case. The patient might ask you that, okay, if you tell the patient, that, okay, now uh, in this case, I think an MRI, an MRT has to be done. So the patient might ask you, okay, doctor, what is an MRI? And you should be in that position to explain that in a simple German uh, without using any complicated terminology. So that part, the off room, if there is a case of appendix, for example, and there has to be an appendix operation, then you should explain, you should be able to explain to the patient how that operation will be done, what are the risk factors involved, and what should be the prognosis? What does the patient expect? Should the patient expect uh, in such cases? So this off clearing, patientin off clearing, which is mentioned here, the second point here, it becomes a very important part of the first section, that is the arts patient gespräch, that is a history taking. Then medical terminologies. Medical terminologies are also uh, sometimes part of the translation that they give you particular words in German you have to convert them in Latin and some words they give you in Latin you have to convert them in German. Some uh, cases you also get phone calls some states like example Sachsen Anhalt you get a phone call from from them itself and then the phone they simulate it as if uh, it was a station as a hospital the nurse is calling a doctor and giving some information about some patient and the doctor is supposed to understand the information and react to it. Say something, uh, what, has to, what the nurse has to be do, give some orders on the phone. So there they also check that if you have understood what the nurse has told you and did you know the medical part of what is to be responded and could you 
respond properly. That is also tested in some uh, Bundes lenders in some states. It's not compulsory in all states. However, in some state it has uh, it has been done or it is been done. Then the last part is arts arts gesprach. That means case presentation to a senior colleague. Now the the outset of this exam is that there are three examiners basically and as one candidate. From these three examiners, one examiner becomes a patient or acts as a patient patient and he will be your he will give you the history you will be or she will give you the history you will be taking history from the from one of the doctors so they know exactly what they have told you in the history so when you present that case and that person is sitting right in front of you he knows what you he has told you and it's also documented they have received that case from the medical council they know what the case was so you cannot lie you cannot say that patient's age was uh, 56 when the age was 65. So, fim fun zex is zex fim sish. You cannot confuse that. You cannot say uh, patient smokes uh, two cigarettes per day when the patient smokes 20 cigarettes per day. So, you have to, that is what they check in this exam that the information when you present the case, the information that you have received from the patient, can you give it further without any adulterations without any changes without any incorrectness this is what they check and they also check that have you first of all can you express everything what the patient told you secondly have you understood everything what the patient has told you so these are the two things that they take to check basically the communication now many people say that this is just a medical terminology examination one should not be much worried about it let me tell you here the passing rate of this exam is 50 60 percent that means every second person who takes the exam fails the exam that that's why one should not take this exam lightly first of all the failure rate the other reason for the failure rate is that people who come to germany are uh, take this exam as a first exam they're new they're just a couple of months in germany or maybe three four months in germany and it's the first attempt they don't know the pattern they are under they talk to different people uh, have different idea about the exam and when they go to exam, they're, they're surprised by the, 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 the degree and the depth of the exam that it is. Okay. Now, this is also different in different states. Some states are, are known for being very lenient. Some states like for lenient as means fair. Uh, some states like mecklenburg vorpommern like Bayern, like uh, Sachsen, like Saarland. Uh, these states are supposed to be fair states where uh, you don't have to worry much if you're prepared well you will pass well uh, pass the exam some states like Münster uh, there they you are supposed to prepare more than what is required because the failing rate is quite high over there these are the trends which keep changing so if I say that okay Münster is the difficult uh, place right now that does not mean that six months from now it will still be difficult it might change so but this is the present scenario that that's why i always see that when selecting a state one should consider these factors as well about selection of state we will talk in another video but in this video we will restrict to the qualifying exams so these are these were the three parts of the fachsprach prüfung exam the arts patient gespräch history taking arts brief schreiben that is the case uh, writing documentation and arts arts gespräch now moving further what subjects are to be uh, considered or prepared for for this exam all common subjects like internal medicine general surgery orthopedics and trauma emergency medicine uh, and some microbiology some pharmacology and Strahlenschutz that is a radiation protection this is this we don't study I mean I did not study in my medical curriculum but here it is given very much importance the Strahlenschutz that means when uh, someone does an x-ray how much radiation is emitted how much does the patient absorb now, how much is allowed what things can be what measures have to be done to uh, reduce this uh, stral and belastum these things have to be done so major subjects to be studied are internal medicine general surgery orthopedics and trauma and emergency medicine so that you are in position to uh, to work in an emergency situation when uh, there is a situation like that in your hospital by with your patients so microbiology pharmacology are very very limited they will not you should not focus much on for Fachsprach Prüfung but Kentis Prüfung yeah but Fachsprach Prüfung not that much but other three four subjects that I said that you should focus now let's talk about the Kentis Prüfung Kentis Prüfung is a knowledge test now foreign doctors who wish to obtain a 
full permanent license in Germany or dentist license in Germany must pass this exam. Exceptions are people whose academic qualification is equivalent to that of German qualification. Now that is decided by the the uh, um, the Anerkennungsteller in Germany, the GFK, the Gutachtensteller. So they uh, analyze your assess uh, the documents, they assess your documents, and they decide that is it equivalent to the German graduates or is it not equivalent. When it is equivalent, then well and good, they uh, you don't need to take the exam. But if it's not equivalent, then they will tell you f uh, either to uh, to uh, fulfill some deficits that they might find. And if the deficits are too high, then they might tell you that go directly take the exam. Now, exam pattern for the Kentnis Prüfung knowledge test is similar to Fachsprach Prüfung history taking that is anamnese. Here also clinical examination comes into picture. Now this pattern is not for dentists. This is for doctors only. For dentists, we will talk about that in a separate video. But this is for medical doctors. Uh, Documentation that's Arts Brief Schreiben and Viva. So here the Viva at the end you will have 60 minutes of Viva. That means here you will start with the case presentation. Here you will have a real patient. You will do real examination. You will get real lab reports. You might get an x-ray. You might get an ECG. You might get a CT scan. You might get an MRI scan. Uh, so you might get uh, all these things uh, to analyze and assess and uh, make a plan, therapy plan or diagnostic plan for that patient. So, and in the VIVA, you will start with presenting your case that, okay, my patient so-and-so, uh, these complaints, everything that we do in a final MBBS level. Later on, after you're done with it, they, will, they might go into theory. They might go into theory related to that case. They might go into theory unrelated to that case. So that you have, that, that's why your exam in Kentonist Prüfung is not only limited to the case that you have, but after the case, it goes into many other fields. Now, this knowledge test is conducted by state dental councils or medical councils. The appointments take around four to 10 months. And this is a practical, like oral and practical exam as I already mentioned. Pattern, this I've already, this is a reputation. Yeah, for dentists that I was about to say, there is also a practical exam section in the KP exam, about which, as I said, the detail will be made in a separate video. The Kentonist Proofung subjects, as the common subjects, internal medicine, general surgery, trauma, orthopedics, uh, anesthesia, neurology, emergency medicine, and the basic subjects like microbiology, pharmacology, pathology, little bit anatomy, medical legal and radiation protection. Basically, it covers the entire MBBS. So here, but the focus remains on the three, four clinical subjects. And in backdrop, one must know related uh, non-clinical subjects as well. So, but not that much. So focus on clinical and little bit when you have time, little bit uh, study on of the non-clinical subjects as well. All right, so with this, I conclude this video here. This was about the qualifying exams. That means the B2 level exam, the Fachsprach Prüfung level exam, and the Kentnis Prüfung exam that you require to have a permanent license in Germany. And with permanent license, you can work as a resident, as a postgraduate resident in Germany. All right, have a nice time. See you in the next video.